welcome to a brand new series of House Flipper, the series where we take a dilapidated property and attempt to sell it to someone who really needs somewhere to live. I'm Phil. And I'm Kirsty. Nope. Nope. I'm not doing this. In today's episode, Tallulah and Chad are looking for a brand new place to call home. They're hoping to start a family soon, and so are looking for somewhere with the space to expand with the patter of tiny little feet. Now we go to our favourite property website uh, to try and find somewhere that'll fit the bill. And frankly, there's quite a lot to choose from. We don't want to overspend the budget that they've set for us today of $130,000, but we want to make sure that what they end up with is sure to be suitable for their little ones in the future. We've gone for somewhere that is particularly storm damaged and uh, we're pretty certain uh, the roof is still intact, but uh, we're gonna fix it up for them good and proper and make sure that Tallulah and Chad have got somewhere they're proud to call home. As you can see, the rest of the neighbourhood has recovered nicely from the storm, with the neighbours having picked up their insurance and spent it wisely on restoring where they live. This house, however, has been a little on the neglected side. Uh, the kitchen has become home to a rather large colony of cockroaches, which is lovely. And uh, my understanding is that prior to their eviction, uh, the house was being used by several recovering Magic the Gathering fans. But we're not going to dwell too heavily on that because our objective is simply to turn this house into the kind of modern masterpiece that any new family would be pleased to live in and to grow up in. Uh, we've got our work cut out for us as you can clearly see. Uh, the doors all appear to work and that's something, um, but when it comes to everything else in the house, frankly, it's a little beyond the capabilities of me, since I'm just the grinning, smiling suit who uh, presents the show. Instead, we're going to hand this over to our team of trained experts who are going to turn this place into a palace. This is stage one. We call it Bring Out Your Dead, where we roam around the house and we look for anything that is unclean unwanted and unwelcome uh we're gonna take a look around let's just do it grab all of this rubbish stick it in the back of the van uh later we'll take it down to a special disposal area that we have and we're gonna set fire to it uh, i'm not sure we're allowed to show that on camera however uh we've got to get around the entire house and throw out some of this stuff uh what confuses me is how people are just leaving cardboard boxes lying around uh, where they've clearly got some bin bags, but they just couldn't be bothered to use them. You know what, there's some nice stuff in that garage, I might half inch some of that later on. Uh, anyway, uh, we're going to get into every room and make sure that there is absolutely nothing left that we want to dispose of, uh, because otherwise it's just going to get in the way when we bring out our new tiling and uh, Swedish furniture uh, to, uh, to spruce the place up and get maximum bang for buck. On the subject of furniture, uh, we're going to get rid of everything that doesn't really fit the new design ethos. Uh, that we're going to be bringing to the party here uh, and that basically means everything. Uh, we do like to leave the odd trinket kicking around however so that the new tenants can get a feel for what it's like to actually live in the place um, although we don't like to tell them exactly how filthy those items were uh, before uh, we, uh, we kind of cleaned up a bit. But we give them a bit of a spruce up, uh, we dose them in fairy liquid that tends to get the job done. Uh, strip all this rubbish out of the garage not that the fella moving in is going to use the garage, of course. Now then, where are those roaches? Suck my hoover! This is the only way to get rid of roaches, other than, of course, you know, killing them with fire. Uh, but uh, we've been asked not to do that uh, for fear that people will emulate our particular style. And, uh, and sometimes it does not quite leave the house intact. For stage two, we like to take things down a notch. Uh, just take it a little bit easier after the frenetic. Well, who am I kidding? Uh, we want to get to action. Mops out. Uh, we're going to run around this place and make sure that we purge the unclean uh, with our American way uh, patented household cleaning implement, uh, Mop Supreme. Uh, we've got to get into every building, every room, every, uh, every nook, every cranny. Uh, every crevice to make sure that we purge everything that could cause disease, illness, 
and uh, and uncertainty among the new owners. Uh, because when we come time to sell this place, if it is not utterly spotless, uh, then we will not get maximum return on our investment. Uh, so we've got to make sure that we do every room completely thoroughly. Look at all this grot. Uh, now, the other benefit you can get from this is if you've decided to keep some of the plates from the previous tenants, uh, just give them a quick whiz with the mop and uh, that'll clean them up enough so that uh, they certainly look hygienic. Uh, whether they are or not is not my concern. Uh, now then, you may occasionally stumble across uh, some bits and pieces of ephemera that you haven't thrown away yet. Uh, probably get those, don't you? Know, let's clean the car while we're at it. Uh, we might get a couple more quid for it after doing that, you never know. Uh, anyway, we'll clean the tools, we'll clean the walls. Uh, spider webs, the mop says, no, spider webs, get out. Uh, we're not going to put up with that stuff in the slightest. I'm going to polish up my tools that I'm taking home later on. Uh, might as well, since I'm in the area. I am on the clock after all. They are paying me to do this. Uh, that all looks reasonably... Uh, you know, let's raise the price. Let's close the door, make sure we haven't missed a bit. Uh, that's great. Grand. Smashing. All right. Anything else to take care of? No, we're golden. On to the next stage of the process, and uh, it's time to get plastered. Uh, obviously, that's a joke, uh, but no, I mean it. Uh, go out and have a couple of cans of beer, come back, get back to work. Uh, so what we're going to do is going to buy some plaster and then uh, apply it liberally uh, to the walls where there is some damage to be done. Let's go. Slap some on your trowel, bang it in the wall. Good bit of smoothing action there. Uh, and I think you'll, you'll definitely appreciate the technique that's being brought to play uh, as we work our way around the building, uh, making sure that all these gaps are filled in. Now, obviously, that's going to result in a slightly, uh, slightly rough texture in some places, uh, but don't worry about that because the paint that we use is, uh, is particularly thick. I left my missile cobwebs there. That's, that's, that's not going to do, is it? Uh, anyway, that room looks clear. Yep, let's uh, grab some more plaster. I like to leave my plaster pot in the hall uh, so that I dribble some all over the floor along the way. Uh, not that it really matters because I'm probably going to replace all the flooring anyway. Uh, look at that big fella there. But still, one, one uh, trowel load will sort you out there with, uh, with no mess, no fuss. Actually, uh, possibly quite a bit of mess, uh, but definitely no fuss, and that's a, that's a good thing. Uh, let's get the garage sorted out. Uh, yep, yeah, this is all, this is all coming along nicely. Uh, now, typically, uh, your, your garage isn't really plastered, but you may have some exposed brickwork going on, uh, which may have seen some wear and tear. Therefore, you will want to uh, just, you know, patch it up a little bit, get it back in order. That's, uh, that's all good. Now, I think I've missed a bit. Uh, where is it? Where is it hiding? It's, uh, it's around here somewhere. Where is it? Uh, where is Ah, there you are. Eat that. Good. Right, plastering done. Pretty sure plastering's done. Just have a last quick check. Feels pretty good. Right. Now then, uh, I've noticed along the way, actually, that we're... Uh, we, we, these doors have all had it, so let's get rid of those. And then, uh, frankly, this corridor doesn't do anything, so uh, so I'm taking it out. Uh, time to, uh, to get the sledgehammer to work. Uh, yeah, I know I just plastered that wall, but, uh, you know, uh, I didn't have any particular plans, so, uh, so we're doing this in an ad hoc fashion. Uh, with that gone, we can make the main bedroom, because uh, that's what that's going to be. We can make that a little bit bigger, uh, which will add to the value of the property when we come to sell it in a few minutes' time. Uh, now then, let's, uh, let's plunk in some new wall. Here we go. That's uh, easier said than done. Obviously, uh, you, you want to line up the mortar uh, with the brick correctly so you get a nice good seal. Uh, and uh, this is pretty quick drying concrete. I mean, as you can see, it's, uh, it's done in a matter of seconds. Um, you can buy these bits of wall ready built, of course, uh, but, uh, but I, choose, uh, I choose to assemble them by hand. Let's uh, widen this door frame because uh, we don't take kindly to things that aren't symmetrical. Uh, let's bang in one more bit of wall there, do the top bits. Lovely job. Now, as I've been looking upwards, I can't help but notice that those lights are a bit manky. I might have to ditch some of those as well, but let's, uh, let's finish the brickwork first. Sound wide enough? Yeah, it must be. Um, I'm sure we'll figure it out. Anyway, uh, bang in a bit more top brick up there. Uh, I'm not entirely sure that's wide enough. Never mind. Uh, keep hammering away. Come on, get down. That's it. You're all busted now. Uh, brick this back in. And as you can see, we've made the main bedroom just that little bit bigger. Uh, so we can put a, a much bigger bed in there, which I'm sure will be appreciated uh, by Tallulah and Chad. 
uh, as they move in. Let's get these, uh, get these lights gone. That's the ticket. Uh, good. Right, now. Okay, now we've taken it apart. It's time to put it all back together again. And we're going to start in the bathroom uh, because every workforce knows that having a fully functional Kazi makes a big difference. Uh, we've gone with the orange tile uh, to kind of bring some sunshine uh, into the smallest room in the house. Uh, and then we're on to wall tiling, uh, which, if you're not careful, can take you the rest of your natural life. Wall tiling certainly is a precision art, and it does take a very long time. I'm going to skip some of this. You know what? Yeah. All right, so I've now been wall tiling for about three and a half years, and we're about done on that front. Let's give the window a quick test. Uh, it's clean. It's lovely. Uh, let's get rid of that light switch. Flipping heck, that looks unsafe. We'll put a clean one in. Right, marvellous. Now then, bang a radiator on. Here's how you bang a radiator on. Like that. Got it? Good. Uh, next up, we're going to put some recessed lighting in there, which was, uh, I mean, it was very popular in the, uh, the uh, late 90s, uh, but uh, I'm bringing it back, uh, and then we'll uh, stick a toilet in. It's as easy as that, friends. Uh, just plug it into the floor, and you're off and running. Uh, wash basin should fit there. It doesn't fit there. That's a, that's a washing machine. Why would you want a washing machine in your bathroom? That doesn't make any sense. Anyway, slightly more involved than plumbing in a toilet, this one. Uh, bringing water into the room far more complicated uh, than taking your brown water out. Uh, now let's assemble the shower, plug that in there, screw that in, drop that on there, bosh bosh, slam it on, screw it up, uh, and then uh, get the doors working and a handle on the outside. You'd think they could mold the handle in the factory, but they haven't, they haven't really bothered. Oh hell, I think this has blocked the light switch. Uh, I'll worry about that in a minute. Doors open, yeah, smashing. Uh, now, you could possibly access the uh, the light switch from within the shower, uh, but frankly, I wouldn't recommend it. Good. Yeah, that's nice. This is a washing machine point. I, I'm not... Tell you what, let's put a bog roll holder in place, and that'll be go all good. Can we can we put anything in? I, that doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, right, one bathroom, pretty much done. Bang a blind on, so you've got some privacy. Jobs are good, and... Now that we've got the ability to have ablutions uh, taken care of, uh, it's time to move on to the hallway. Uh, first thing we'll do is we'll bang some lights in uh, so we can see what the heck's going on. Now, I don't plan on decorating the hallway particularly, uh, other than a bit of paint, you know. Uh, so, uh, so we'll put some ostentatious light fittings in. Uh, now, the colour I've chosen for this particular hall uh, is called pistachio. Uh, but if you see any pistachios that are this colour, I recommend you don't eat them. Uh, because, uh, well, I mean, just look at the colour. Uh, it's not very appetising, is it? I mean, in fact, it looks, it looks frankly rotten. Uh, but there we go, that looks, yeah, that's more or less done. And uh, obviously, because this is a high traffic area of the house, we're going to use a real pale wood uh, for the flooring, so it really shows up those muddy footprints. Now, onto the lounge, uh, and uh, unlike uh, the hall, we're not using paint in here. That's far too easy. Instead, we've gone for these wallpaper dado rail flipping wall panels, and... Uh, they're every bit as much of a pain in the backside to mount as the tiles in the bathroom were. So uh, I'm not going to make you sit through all of this. I'm going to make you sit through just enough of it that you start to go, yeah, all right, now, get the idea. There you go. So that's that done. Uh, now let's get rid of those. I'm going to do something slightly ostentatious in a minute with the floor. Uh, let's just get these, uh, uh, get these doorways and uh, the inside of the window sorted out. Yeah, that's, that's nice. Can't go wrong with a bit of white. Uh, for, for this area of, uh, of your painting uh, and frankly that's the way I like it that's pretty shiny uh, good right let's get rid of the light switches put in some uh, put in some new ones so people don't electrocute themselves now then once you've chosen a suitable uh, floor color you could just do the whole thing in uh, in the same bit of laminate uh, obviously cu uh, cu uh, carpet is no, is no longer fashionable um, so you've got to do it in laminate these days because it's cold underfoot uh, gets sticky very easily uh, but uh, I've created a little patch of carpet in the middle uh, now as you can see I've gone with the uh, the orange curtain to kind of match the uh, the tonal motif that we've gone for uh, then we're on to furniture because obviously we're going to flog this house fully furnished uh, got a nice uh, TV table in there bang a telly on top of it uh, we're not going to bother setting that up we'll leave them to uh, wade their way through uh, impenetrable uh, Japanese instruction manual uh, put a speaker in that's it lovely everyone likes a cheeky speaker that's nice now you're going to need something to sit on and that means a sofa again keeping with the same colour palette uh, we've gone for something that is suitably large 
Uh, stick, some, stick some lights in there because uh, I'm not a believer in this light fitting we've put in here, you know. I think a couple of lamps are going to work, work out just lovely. Uh, what should we have next? Yeah, bookcase. Uh, so that uh, those books you haven't read have got somewhere to live and that's your lounge sorted. Right, you can now smell that the end is in sight and uh, we start to work on the heart of the house with stage six. Uh, and that takes us to the kitchen. Uh, no messing, no fussing in the kitchen. Uh, we're gonna go with white on most of the walls. Uh, and then in the splashback areas, uh, we're gonna use some particularly tasteful tiling. Uh, there we go, what should we go with here? Uh, let's go with uh, Dark Angels Green. I think will probably work quite nicely uh, in order to, uh, to set off that white uh, really quite supremely. Uh, and I think you'll see yeah, that looks, that looks very, very pleasing. Uh, so now we're going to turn our attention to some appliances. Uh, start with the fridge, obviously, most important appliance of all, because because uh, that's where you keep your Red Bull. Um, let's uh, move all this clobber out of the way a little bit. Hook up another radiator, because my life isn't complete unless I'm hooking radiators up. Uh, and then we'll get a nice big work top in there as well after tiling the rest of the floor. Uh, that looks good. It's overhanging a bit at the end, uh, but we'll stick a cheeky cupboard in there and, uh, and that should sort that out, no problem at all. Looked like it was completely intentional. Stick a quick hot or hob on the top there. Don't worry about plugging it in. We'll leave that for the tenants to figure out, along with the extractor fan as well. Uh, apparently that is the same green there on that kitchen cabinet, uh, but that's a little bit more salamander uh, than it is Dark Angel. Uh, anyway, we've put the tat away and, uh, and the kitchen starts to take on a uh, life of its own. Moving over to the bedroom, uh, we've decided to go with a, a nice uh, dark blue in here uh, because uh, that's the kind of activity that's going to be uh, conducted uh, in this room. Uh, now, once we've got that in place, obviously slap some flooring in and then we want to choose them uh, a nice big appropriate bed uh, given that this is, uh, this is somewhere where they're going to spend at least a third of their day. Uh, so arguably that bed's a little too large for this room, uh, but I don't think anyone's going to complain. Uh, we're then going to hook Chad up with a computer so that he can get some, uh, get some late night activity in there uh, on League of Legends after his missus has gone to sleep. Uh, obviously, you know, we'll put some plants in there to, uh, to take into account that uh, people need oxygen. So just finishing touches to do uh, before we can see if Tallulah and Chad are in slightly interested in this property. Uh, first off, we'll put the doors back in. Uh, people tend to like it when they can close the bathroom door when they're taking care of business. Uh, and uh, I've taken a very simple uh, door out on. No, that's the wrong size. Uh, either the door is at fault or Sam Burke has made this, uh, this doorway uh, too small. No matter, it's nothing that the uh, the sledgehammer can't handle, so we've got that done. The bad news, of course, is that this particular wall needs three different shades uh, to uh, to properly uh, fit in with the proceedings, and uh, I just sold all my paint. Uh, so uh, we'll get that fixed up, that's that's not a problem. Uh, it's, uh, it's not going to take more than a couple. Where's the right colour? Flipping, come on, get the green, and we like the blue, and uh, get rolling. There you go, that's one of them, that's a bit of that. Splendid, good. Sell all that back again and we're back in business. Look at that, door, fits like a glove. Uh, yep, all of these work, everything's good, lights on. Excellent, that's what we like to see. Make sure we've got all the light switches in place and uh, we now have ourselves a fully functional house uh, that we're ready to go with. You know what, no house is complete uh, with a fully armed auto assault rifle uh, for a bit of personal protection. Uh, let's have a quick look around the place before we sell it. There's your living room, and uh, there's the bathroom in there. Bit of bedroom, lovely job. Uh, then uh, out in the garage, which we painted uh, workshop purple, because uh, people like that. And uh, we're ready to put it on the market. Well, disappointingly, after we got in touch with Tallulah and Chad, it uh, turns out that they'd split up. Uh, Tallulah having found out about Chad not actually playing League of Legends late at night, uh, rather visiting Harry Potter slash fix sites. Uh, so we've put the house up for sale, and uh, and the bids are coming in now uh, with $105,000 as the opening bid. That's a, that's a little low. Um, uh, but here, the, the, the bids are definitely coming in. The Johnson family might, uh, might squeeze in there, but I, I, I doubt that somehow. Uh, Jimmy Traitor there. Uh, it's nice that there's no kids around. 
Uh, single men seem to be pretty keen on what we've put together here. Must be the Purple Garage. Uh, but it's the Smoth family uh, who seem to be coming in with the highest offer of $128,000. That'll about wrap it up for this episode of House Flippers. And uh, we're certainly uh, happy with the result we got, uh, even though it wasn't the one that we were intending to make. Uh, and next time around, uh, we'll take on something a little bit more ambitious, hopefully with a family who are able to stay together. Anyway, I've been uh, Phil. Uh, please chuck a subscribe at this series if you'd like to stay in touch with it. And uh, be sure to... Leave your comments as to whether you think the house was underpriced or not. Uh, that one will run and run. Uh, I'll be back very soon with a little bit more of the same. Maybe Kirsty will be along next time as well. Thanks for watching. Cheerio!